Hey guys, so no intro, no outro, very informal. We're gonna hang out and I'm going to show you my filming setup today. This is going to be everything that I can possibly think to tell you and show you about how I film, including the camera that I use, the microphone that I use, the camera settings that I use, everything that I have kind of learned over the years, everything that I can think to share is gonna be in this video. This was kind of requested and also part of a conversation with, it was requested by one patron, but also kind of a conversation that I had with a couple people on Patreon. Um, so I should mention then at the beginning before we get started, of course, if you like what you are watching, consider checking me out on Patreon. Um, patrons help support the channel by keeping all of my content unsponsored, ad-free, and helping to provide a budget for videos like the one that you're seeing now. And so check me out on there. There will be links in the description of this video. So we were having this conversation what kind of lighting, what kind of, these are people who also do videos. And it was just like, you know, I think what would be easier and, and perhaps even more fun for people is if I just like went through and showed you everything that I can think to show you. I'm gonna start with lighting and then we'll talk about the microphone and audio stuff and then we'll go into the camera. I will include links to anything that I can think of. Uh, like I bought like the light ring on Amazon, I bought the camera lens on Amazon. Those are not affiliate links. I'll just, I don't even know how to set that up, yo. So that's just gonna be like links to this is what it is and also the information for that model or whatever, in that product in case like it's not available. If, if the link is old, depending on when you're watching this, um, so you know what the information is on that thing. Um, let's start with lighting. The lights that I'm using now, and I have soft boxes, I have all kinds of different lights, and they it changes. The lighting is the thing that changes the most for me, depending on what mood I am in. But right now, I am using these, which came in like a kit. They were all three of them. It was like a cheap photo kit for like a hundred bucks. I've had these for probably, oh my gosh, eight, nine years, maybe even more. And I have colored bulbs in these. Just, just color. Oh, that was uh, annoying. Colored LED bulbs, orange, right there. And not all of them. That one's orange or the, or red. That one is white. And I do that because I like my background to be warm. So when you see the background and it looks very warm and yellowy and orangey, that's why. I also use gels sometimes, meaning like the like cellophane kind of things that you can. Well, here I'll just show you. You can get these at like theater supply stores. Um, I will include a link to uh, one of them, the, my favorite places in, in West Seattle, but you can see if you look through like one of these. Uh, 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 uh. It's just like that. And it's meant for like stage lighting and stuff. So you can also cut those out and tape those to this and that works just fine. Um, and then you just use a, a white bulb, but colored, colored bulbs like this are really cheap. I always make sure, especially if I'm filming in the daytime, in the nighttime, I really only have to worry about cars going by um, to see if you see like light going across the back of the room. But in the daytime, the sun can like come and go in clouds and the room gets lighter and darker. So I want to control that as much as possible so that I don't have any fluctuation in brightness and all that stuff because I keep my camera on manual settings. So I have just two pieces of foam board that I use that I put in my windows. And that way I block out all natural light whenever I'm filming. It's just, I, I think it's just the easiest way for me to do it so that I can really control my environment in terms of lighting. I should mention, by the way, that this room, this is my kind of, well, it's mine and Jeff's, um, our, our art studio. He uh, paints and um, I do everything that I do. Um, my recording studio is across the wall here, but this is my, um, our <laughs> art studio. And this is where I film. This is all set up exactly how it, is set up like normally. So filming has nothing to do with how any of this looks. This is just how I like the room. I change it now and then, but that's how I like my backgrounds to be. I've had very intentional backgrounds, very staged back backgrounds before in videos. And I tend to just like to just do a room how I would do it, how I would live in it, and then find a corner that looks good and shove a camera there. And that's, that's my background. I've had 
plain backgrounds before, like gray or colors or whatever. And, and I like the way that they look, but um, a friend of mine, Donna, who used to make videos on YouTube, uh, Donna Shorts, um, one, none of her content's on anymore, so it doesn't really matter. But she told me once that she really liked watching videos of people in their homes because it gave her an idea of who they were. And that kind of stuck with me. And I sort of, um, I guess I adhere to that philosophy now. This is my filming. Oh, well, I should mention light ring, but this is, this is where I sit and where I film. I sit in the stool and I look at the camera. The light ring I purchased for the Metamorphosis music video. I've never had one before. I've made my own using hula hoops or wreath forms that you get at a craft store and Christmas lights. You just wrap them around and plug it in. If you're going to use Christmas lights for a light ring, because it does work and it works really nice and I like the way that it looks actually. But if you're going to use them, make sure that you're um, really adjusting your white balance on your camera. Look in your camera's manual for how to do that because Christmas lights tend to be really, really, really warm and you will look very, very, very orange. So make sure that you adjust those um, if you're going to use that. But this is just an LED light ring. It did come with other like orange little filters if you wanted to use them. And I have, and I don't notice much of a difference, but these are Ikea kitchen cabinets with no doors. And I just like shoved it in that and decorated it with fake flowers. Um, and that's Raven, by the way, on that, that, that mannequin head. And then the cord just comes down, plugs in behind this desk. Um, and that's, oh, so attractive, I know, but this is how it's set up. And, um, and that's that. So this is where I film. This is what it all looks like. You can see my mention here, Patreon, because I constantly forget to mention it when I'm filming videos and I'm trying to get more in the habit of doing that. Um, this is just added sound uh, barrier protection. This is actually something that I normally use in my recording studio, but I am not currently, so I just threw it in here and I didn't want it to get just tossed in the closet, so I've just been sticking it back here behind the microphone. The microphone that I use is from Blue. Um, it doesn't really matter. I also use, uh, this is painted gold, again, for the uh, Metamorphosis music video, and I put a little, um, like, pop filter thingy on here, a uh, wind guard. Um, the Shure SM58, I think it is, right? I get the 57 and the 58 confused, and in a lot of ways, they're essentially the same microphone. Those are really good mics, and that's what I've used for years. I've used it for instrument recording. I've used it for YouTube videos. It's technically not a boom mic, I suppose, but it works really well. And the thing that I love about them is that you can drop them, kick them, throw them around the room. They will not break. They last forever. Really good microphone. I will also include links to all of this stuff that I'm talking about in the description area. Um, in order to use this, though, I have a Canon 80D camera, by the way. This, I only, you don't need the 80D. I just bought it because it was a deal on Costco and it's what they had and I needed a new camera at the time. That's what was available, so that's what I bought. If you plug your microphone directly into the microphone port on here, the audio is not loud enough. That's at least with the mics that I use. I found that it's far too quiet. Anytime that I can't hear you, I've gotten those comments on, on, on videos. Like, where are you? Well, I can't hear you. I have to turn it all the way up. That's why. So I needed to get a preamp to go microphone, preamp, camera. So you can see that this wire kind of plugs in to the back of here. And then this, this is just shoved in the drawer there. Um, this plugs into the camera. These are my, this is the preamp that I use. It's from Behringer. It's not expensive. It does not have an on off switch. So you have to unplug it when you're done. And these are the settings that I typically have it at. This is just what I have found to be the best for me so that I'm not getting a lot of noise from the room. I'm not getting any like buzz from lights or any other electronics. This just seems to work well to really beef up the volume of this before it goes into the camera. Um, and that's kind of pretty much it. I always check levels. I have a pair of headphones here. I plug these in when I film. I plug those into the camera. I plug the microphone into the camera and I check my levels to make sure that I'm not peaking. And I will show you what that means because now we're going to sit down and talk about the camera that I use and the settings that I have. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, this lens is from Sigma. This is not a stock lens that comes with Canon. I wanted a lens that had a shallower depth of field, an ability to really blur the background. This does that. Um, 
I will include links to this as well. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but by far, as far as camera lenses go, it's also not expensive. I think I bought this one like as a refurb or used and I paid around $300, $350 for it. So again, as far as camera lenses go, it's not, it's not super expensive, but it is an investment. However, I do really like this lens and I've had a lot of fun working with it and, and kind of playing around with it. So I've just turned the camera on. We're going to look at the, the, the viewfinder here. Now you can see as I'm talking, this is the camera's onboard mic. You can see that it's picking up my, um, my voice and you want to look for it to go into the red. If it goes into the red, oh, okay. <laughs> like that, just smack the camera. That's, that's peaking. Now, when I plug in the microphone, to so the microphone right now is plugged into the preamp and the preamp is on i'm going to plug this into the microphone jack i'm not going to plug in the headphones because it just doesn't matter right now but you can see looking at the viewfinder it doesn't look any different but it's actually picking up the signal not from the camera but from the microphone so you can see when i tap on the mic do you see how that went red there on those on that that far right I, i've actually pointed at my phone right over there it went great went red that's what you want to avoid when you're talking. So typically when I'm talking, I'm about this close to the mic and that's about where I like to have it um, as far as like the audio levels go. If you want it louder, this is where you're gonna mess with your settings. If you want it quieter, this is where you're gonna mess with your settings. So um, that's just what I use for a mic and um, a the preamp. And obviously if there's any questions that you have on any of this, um, let me know. I'm gonna tell you what my camera settings are for filming and this is I, I am not a photographer i've never gone to school for this this is just what i've learned in trial and error i'm not even going to remember all of the names of the things that i'm going to tell you about which is really horrible i really should i'm realizing right now that i don't know exactly what what everything is um i always have my camera on manual settings you can see right here it's on manual always i always have it on manual focus it's just what i like i like do you see how this like goes into focus and then out of focus there this shirt actually does fit me um i like that it's just this is where the focal point is and 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 i like being able to move in and out of focus and that's i don't know this is what i like so in order to do that there's there's a couple settings here i'm going to share with you every setting that i have this one here this is the, I don't know what this is. So let's, 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 this is F, F stop, I believe is what we call it. Um, the lower the number, and this is on your lens, the lower the number, the narrower the field of focus is that you're going to see. See how that blurs, but, oops, sorry. If I increase that number, you're gonna see that both the foreground and the background are darker. Now, when you adjust these, it does change the um, the brightness on, on the, the screen. So you're, you have to kind of fiddle with these three settings, two or three settings um, all together. You could have it at this, this is the lowest that this camera lens goes, is this 1.4. You could have it there. I typically have it around two because 1.4 at 1.4, when my face is in focus, my ears are blurry. And that's just a little bit too narrow of a field of focus for me. This one, oh my gosh. So we've got the f-stop. We've got your ISO settings here, which we haven't talked about. This other one, what's it called? I will include it in the description of this video because I can't. I'm blanking right now. And someone's going to leave me a comment who's like smarter than me and go, it's the blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to go, yeah, dipshit. I told you I'd write it in the comments. Um, so... The the higher the number here, this is what I know about it. Uh, again, you'll see it get darker, but the higher the number, the more the motion, I'm gonna adjust this. I'm gonna adjust, hang on a second. I'm gonna sh illustrate this for you. I'm gonna change the brightness on here. The higher this number, the more your, see how that looks, my hand when it's moving. Now watch what happens when I, I'm gonna lower that and then I'm gonna change this so it's not as bright anymore. And you'll see, do you see how, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little more blurred. I keep this as low as possible because I think it makes the, the, the quality of the video look more cinematic. The lower the number, the more blurred the image is as you're moving around. 
you remember, I was talking to a friend of mine about this this morning, do you remember all those fight scenes in the old Gladiator movie with Russell Crowe, how everything looked very jittery? And, and it was, it. this gives the same effect the higher the number. It just, if you want like crisp pauses and, and crisp like freeze frames, if, if that's what you want, then you want this number higher. If you don't and you want something that looks more cinematic, you want that number lower. So I put that as low as possible. I put my focal point, my f-stop at around two. I don't, the stock lens doesn't go that low, I'll tell you that. And then the ISO here also changes the, the brightness. So this is, this is, and that's how I know it. I know this all has to do with aperture and exposure and all that kind of stuff. Blah, 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 touch me. I um, just keep this, um, I use this as basically my, my, my brightness adjustment. So I do know that if you have all of these set to where they're like um, really dark, and then you go in to adjust your ISO to make the image brighter, it's gonna be grainier. If you have these, um, these numbers set to where it's not so dark and you can keep this number lower, the ISO number, it's not gonna be as grainy. Now, I don't mind the graininess. It's also something that I think gives the video a very cinematic look. So that's not something that really bothers me, but I happen to like these, just these other settings where they are. In this camera, and, and all cameras are gonna be different, but all of these three settings in a manual mode on pretty much any like DSLR camera are all gonna, you're all gonna be, you're gonna be able to adjust all of those settings. And even if you don't know what the hell they're called, the two point, the blah, 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 that's the f-stop, this is the whatever, and this is your ISO. You, you can tell the difference between the numbers because the range is much different than, you're not gonna have this at 500 to 1,000. Um, I go into my settings for manual and you can set the white balance on this camera. So let me do that again so you can see. Um, this button up here at the top corner and then I click on this, that K, this sets the color temperature. Now I do this this way. I do it manually so that's cooler, this is warmer. You'll see the image, it's getting yellow or blue. And depending on the light that I use, I change that every time I'm filming, depending on the light that I have set up, I always go in and I check my white balance. Because if I have lights that are warmer and I was previously filming like in an outdoor and an overcast day and I had it adjusted for that and I move into an indoor light, it's gonna look really, really, really yellow. So that's the thing that I change. I also go in here, there's this, this little feature here, oops, this one right here, picture style info. This allows you to change sharpness, contrast, saturation, and all that stuff. So this is how I have mine set up. I have the sharpness all the way down. It's just what I like. I like it to look not super duper crisp. I have the contrast bumped down two levels. Again, it's just what I like. I like the picture to look a little softer. And then I have the saturation actually turned down. Some people might turn it up. I have mine turned down like one, oh, let me go back there. I have mine turned down one little blip. Get back, y'all. Yeah. Right there, you can obviously, you can go like way down or you can go way up, but I keep mine here. The contrast is something I do low because I think that in post you can go and you can up the contrast and, and if you want it a little more, uh, you want your blacks blacker, you want your whites whiter, you can do that in your uh, in your, your video editing software, but um, it's harder. To, it's, it's like cutting your hair. You can always cut more, but it's harder to cut like less. Does that make sense? Whatever it is that I'm trying to say, I don't know if I said that right. And then this one is just your color tone and I leave this dead set in the center because if I go one way or the other, it starts to mess with like kind of the, the, the hues and the tints to the picture. But that's where I keep my camera. Um, that's, that's how I have the settings set up. And again, informal video, I know that I don't have all of the technical lingo, but I think that that's okay because this is really meant for those of us who aren't photographers, who don't, it's, it's hard to go onto YouTube and like go, how do you do this and have somebody throw out a bunch of technical jargon that you've never heard of before? And I don't know about you, but girl, I don't wanna read a manual. I just want somebody to show me what the hell I'm supposed to do. So if you like the way my videos look, this is exactly how I have things set up. Um, I can't think of anything else to share with you. 
I do change the lens out if I have two people on camera because this has no zoom. A lot of lenses that you get won't have a zoom on them. A lot of the sort of after, after add-on lenses or whatever. This doesn't allow me to zoom in or out. This just is where it is and that's where it is. So I have to move the camera back and forth if I want that, if I want that set up. And by the way, my tripod is a binder on a book. That's just what I like. It angles it down just a little bit. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier or not, but um, that's just kind of how I have it. And the microphone's on like a little, a little um, stand that you, this is normally you would use to like put in front of like an amplifier for guitar, but um, that's kind of how I have it set up. Um, but yeah, it doesn't zoom and, um, but the stock lens will, and uh, it just doesn't have the same, um, that that it doesn't go as low on the on the f-stop so I can't get that same really soft blurred effect that you'll see in videos um, and sometimes I want it and sometimes I don't sometimes I want like a wide angle more of a fisheye I want to see more of the room sometimes I want everything crisper I have to go back to the stock lens if I'm filming with somebody else because I need to be able to zoom out actually on the lens it does I can't get the camera back far enough to be able to have that work this is the lens that I filmed the metamorphosis music video on i just had this i had the f-stop set a lot more this direction so that more of the background was in focus instead of blurred that's how i had the part where i was dancing around in front of the records um every the, the other stuff it was a little bit lower um but it's just how i had how i had i like this lens and it really works for a lot of good things so um it's why i used it for the video it gives a really crisp picture and I just like how it looks. So that is my filming studio setup. Everything that I can think to, to tell you. Um, I do have the light ring. If I didn't mention this, you'll notice that the light ring is up. Not, I don't sit with my face dead center. I just don't like that. I like a little bit of shadow cast um, along the bottom of my jaw. Um, it just gives, makes me feel like I have more of a chin than I think that I have. And um and that's that. So the point is, play around with, you can play around with your lighting, you can do lamps with, uh, take, um, you know, any kind of anything, take the, the, the shade off of a lamp, put a different bulb in it, stick a bucket over it, whatever, and you can just kind of play around with um, how you want it to look. I would urge you, if you're curious, to have fun, be creative, and try to be at least a little unique. There's a lot of sort of standards in how beauty videos look. And I understand the frustration and the lack of creativity. And I feel it too, is because if you're doing like a makeup video, people need to really see everything evenly. I'm trying to unplug this fucking thing. And they really, um, you need like that even like lighting on both sides and everything has to be blah, 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 blah. But you can still have fun with your background. You can still, I love to be backlit. So one of these lights is always aiming behind me. One of them is aiming here. One of them is aiming here. This one might be pointing up just to like illuminate the ceiling and fill out some of the shadows. I don't turn this on when I'm filming because I just, it's too bright. I don't like how it looks. And I never have this set all the way up. It's usually turned on. I'll actually show you. So when I first turn it on, it's gonna come out bright. And then I put it almost to the lowest setting. I don't have it bright. I don't need it that bright. I don't want to look at it that bright. And I think that when you have it too bright, it really washes you out. And it can give kind of, in my opinion, it can kind of give a false impression of how the makeup looks. It's like an old Bananarama video when they're all like washed out and all you see is bright red lips. And I'm done. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, obviously leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, for those of you who make videos, I hope that this was helpful and remember to check me out on Patreon and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys.